now we going to discuss on the object oriented programming till now we already worked in object oriented programming only in fact so generally a common thought is that if you are using classes it's called object oriented if you are not using classes it's not object oriented that is a general thought but in fact till now you never used a single class but still you are working on object oriented how it is a sentiments everything you are treating like an object uniquely each object has its properties and you are working like that if you see in python whatever you create so like you know uh, if you say number 1 is equal to 123 so number 1 is an object which is half type 123 if you ask the type of it it will be saying what exactly this type is there and if you ask the address location it will tell where exactly this number is there similarly if you want a floating point value i can give the same thing similarly if i want a string so number 3 string if i give i do something means python is supporting you the basic data types what are the basic types so basic type means so int float so none boolean string so these are the basic things so and apart from that it is also supporting with you your data structures so list so tuple set and dictionary these were the data structures apart from that you have optimized objects optimized objects for uh, large data processing so we have something else mainly we can work with the iterators generators so this is what you have learned now these are all predefined objects they have some properties they work in that way only what if i want a customization so in fact these are all objects we are working so that is where we need to go for the class if you are not going for class it does it mean that you don't have anything in fact it has if let's say if i go for the number 1 which is integer if i ask help of this number 1 did you see that when you ask for any help it will show the class of int means you didn't create it but it is already there so whenever you are working anything in the back end it will work with the classes only that's why it is object oriented programming by default whether you use classes or not it is object oriented already but when we need a classes when we want to know custom objects now we will understand why we need those custom objects first of all so there can be different ways of solving a problem but certain times so means uh, you can think about other languages let's say c language it is procedure oriented go language it is a functional oriented elixir functional oriented sir how people are solving the problems there why we need object oriented why we need classes as i told you any problem can be solved in different ways without object oriented also with pure functional programming i can solve one problem with object oriented how it becomes mature i will show you so first to understand what is the problem that you are trying to solve assuming that i want to create a use case where you might have known about an ordinary banks in a bank there is a savings bank in that i want to create two customers customer 1 and customer 2 each has their own account and they are doing individual transactions initially zero balance subsequently he has deposited and when withdrawn so here also deposited and withdrawn so two accounts we need to create and maintain till now with our knowledge how we can do that can i do it in a single program so if i create like you know say define uh, like create account may assume that you know so you want like two separate things right you want a deposit deposit so i don't write the logic see how i am doing pass first and then i want to have withdraw pass i have these things i write like you know name underscore underscore is equal to hope you remember this why we are writing this any functions which are written if you want to import this particular script in another you don't want the below code to execute 
only when the script is executed directly. So we want these to execute. So that's why I wrote it here. So first I need to create an account. So I can try to solve it. How to solve it? Uh, so if there is an amount, for that amount, I can add the deposit. If there is an amount, for that amount, I can withdraw the things. So assume that I am creating something. Say, initially, what is that? Uh, account creation. Customer 1. Customer 1 is equal to customer 1, say, balance is equal to 0. For customer 1, we need to do a deposit. So I pass to the deposit of customer 1. And I want to do like, you know, so 1000, right? Sorry, 1000, yeah. 1000, I want to add to the customer. Okay, then I will do here. What I will do? So, uh, customer. Uh, and what is the amount? This is what you want to add. So, what I will do? For a customer, so amount, existing amount will be there. So, customer balance will be there balance so for that balance you want to add i will take this one and say that customer balance is equal to customer balance plus amount can i think like that plus amount fine so okay and then i will return this one return customer balance fine if needed you can do so now after doing this one i want to implement this one so I want to say like, say you have customer one initial balance. What we do with the initial balance? Say like customer one balance I write. So after you deposited, after deposit, thousand. Balance equal to, so how much? So for that balance, I would say customer balance one again, right? I didn't did implement with the draw, just I did this one. So now we need to go to this. CD 13. Okay. Clear and Python 00, zero so and so. Did you see that initially customer balance is something? And subsequently, it becomes zero. Sir, we have added, right? Then why we couldn't do? Hope you remember I told. Whenever you have, so in a functions, what are, is it call by value or call by reference? Call by value. If you want any value to be changed, so what we need to do? Either we need to do somewhere to cache here. Like after deposit, we can say like, Deposit equal to like this. Like this we can do, right? So what are you doing? I would do. Now, if I do now, did you see? Initial balance and now what is the balance? You got now after this much, what is the balance? It is 1000. In the same fashion, if I want to do the withdraw function. In the same logic I can do, right? So I can write withdraw and the amount. But this time, instead of a plus, I can do a minus equal to. Right? So, can I do the same way? I did the deposit. Now, I want to do like um, withdrawal. Withdrawal equal to customer. And also, we need to pass, what is this? 800, right? Sorry, withdraw 200. 200. So, after withdraw 200. So what is the balance? Did you see now? It is 200, right? First you added 1000 minus 200, it's 800. So you did this much struggle. Now let's go for the second customer. Say customer 2. So initially customer 2 balance equal to 0. So we want to replicate the same features again for the customer 2. So customer 2 to get some gap, like I will give an empty print. So customer two initial balance, I got it. Subsequently for customer two, I need to do. Here also for customer two, here also for customer two. Customer two, customer two. So for customer two, what is the time? 
Initially, we want to deposit 3,500. So deposit 3,500. And what is the amount we need to withdraw 550? Now you see what will happen. Did you maintain the same exact limits? Finally, a problem can be solved in different ways. This is one way of solving it. But here, what you understood? We have solved this problem, but every time we are doing like these things. So we are tracking these variables and we are storing the results and others. Sir, what is the other way of storing? We can create the balance as a global variable. Initially, you assign that global variable and you want to withdraw. So, means, did you see that without the classes, I am able to solve this problem? So, if I want to solve the same problem for like more number of customers, okay, for first customer, it is okay. Second customer, it is okay. Third customer, it is okay. So, 10, 15 are coming. So, then things will become difficult, right? So without so classes, I want to address the same problem in a different way. So with pure uh, immutable objects, I did it in the same fashion with immutable objects. Means with a dictionary, I can solve this problem in much better way. So to quickly tell you how I would solve this, I have taken this object entirely. The same thing. So what are the classes and objects we have? I will copy the same. I think I copy the same content. So earlier what we did, we have solved in different ways. So now I want to solve the same thing in a different way. So what I will do, I will state like a balance separately, like a create account. Within that account, I will place like initially return. So what is the balance? Is zero. And subsequently, when I'm working, I will work with that. To make the things easy, what I will do is like, so whenever the account is created, so instead of me checking and tracking all the balances, I will check with the customer one. So I would say like, you know, create account. With create account, so we can ask what is the customer one balance. So as it is a dictionary, so whenever you want to assign customer one, I can ask, hey, what is the balance like this? So the way that you are referring to things are different now. Now, similarly, if you want to do the same thing for the account, instead of you working with these things, you can give the account only. Here also, you can give the account only. Then how we can add or remove to the balance means you can add here to that. So from that given account, you can increment the values account of balance right balance plus equal to amount instead of you doing these things and you need not even return anything so then your logic will become easy so now instead of this i will just do like this i will focus on what i need to do in fact i am not returning anything so things became so easy if you see a problem can be solved different ways by using different methodologies, you are reducing the complexity of the code and how we are working. Here also, if I say um, customer one and I want to do an addition, so I'm not returning anything, so I remove it. So when I want to check, I can just focus on this. The same problem, which I solved earlier by creating a variable and tracking that variable every time and doing. Okay, sir, if it is one variable, fine. What if there are three variables? You cannot track with three variables, four variables, five variables. So that's where, so dictionary is a better solution. You can have any number of variables, all can be tracked. In the same logic for the second one also, we can need to do in the same way. We need to create account. So instead of we tracking the balance, I do like this now. So here, so if I ask customer two of balance, I gonna get it. Customer two of balance. In the same logic here also, here also, and I do, and I am returning not returning anything. So it is like customer two which is gonna pass. Customer two here also customer two, and we are not passing anything. 
same problem we solved in a different ways now if you say python 0 1 so and so you can see that still some variable yeah we didn't change it what we gonna do it is minus equal to so i solved it same problem like this same problem like this i solved so okay before solving it with the classes so where we want to further reduce the complexity and here also within each function you have only one variable balance what if there are some other things which need to be tracked maybe the uh, you know accounts uh, uh, dynamic things can be like what is your current assets or interest or loans or something if you want to track it would be hard right so then we cannot do all of that with dictionaries to some extent we can solve the problem in the same way if i go further a step ahead to understand how these classes works and how we need to create first we will understand what is the concept of initialization initialization means a class can be created so this terminology you need to remember so whenever you have a class okay class is like a blueprint so everyone gives this example to you like a blueprint and instance is a so replica of it say like you know you have some kind of blueprint how to create the nodes currency nodes so have you seen any time in the printer so so currency nodes or like even a newspaper you want to print you will first arrange everything or in, even simple thing you have a stamp you know so a stamp rubber stamp you can take this as an analogy rubber stamp is what is a class from that whatever the prints you are doing you know so print of stamp is instance so you will if the rubber stamp is having something else will you get a different instance no whatever is there you will get the same thing right so this is called as a class and an instance so from a class we create an instance now let's do it now there are two types of classes in python one is like you know so old style class and other one is new style class i think you seldom hear about this because in python 3 there is nothing like a old style class old style classes are there only in python 2 how different they were sir means they have some functionalities which are not there in old style so in python 3 everything is new style means uh, every same classes only but few other attributes they added so in python 2 in the last days when they are migrating they added those features also but still certain things like property and other decorators may not work properly in python 2 okay now coming to the camel case so pipet i told in the starting class called as python enhancement proposal 8 why specifically 8 sir there is nothing to do with it so in the chronology of they creating various um, enhancements for every enhancement they will give a name and coordinate that's how they came up with uh, pip8 one of the guidelines from pip8 is that when you create a class it should name should be like in a so camel case so till now we know about functions for how functions how we do we define a function and we call it you define 100 functions but if you don't call nothing will execute in the same fashion if i go for like class definition so we need to define the class and we need to instantiate right so this is called as function definition and function call in the same lines if i say this is called as a class definition and this is a class initialization or like instantiation this is the most important word you need to remember instantiation instantiation is the process of creating instance from a class okay so if you same like a function call here also like well there will be a call to the class so in fact that will create the things okay so now if you when you are creating not every time you will get a return value if you want to assign to a return value you can assign that if i assign to that and then if i check hey what's gonna value and all of that 
So, or like, you know, before even doing that, if you want to check, okay, what is the type of this class and other information? Python. Zero two. So did you observe that when I'm asking, hey, what is the type of this object? You can see it is telling that I am of type class. And if you ask, hey, what is empty class? It has nothing, right? In fact. So if you ask, it is saying that I am class underscore underscore main underscore underscore empty class. What did this mean, sir? I told you, whenever you make a call to a function, sorry, in his Python script, so anything can be called directly or indirectly. When you're calling directly, the name will be equal to main. So that's what I want to say. Okay. Now say, you are creating, but you want to assign to something. Now this way you got the instance. So this is the class the type, type. It will say I'm of type type, not a class type. Because class itself is of no type. It is of type type. Now created an instance. Earlier also we created, but we didn't assign to anything. Now let's say I'm trying to assign to something. You will notice the difference. You can notice that here. When you ask it, hey, what is the type of this class? You can notice that. Type is of type main dot empty class. So, so this is of type type. When you ask for the class, what is the type? It says I am of type type. So when you ask for empty, sorry, instance, it will say I'm of this one. Observe the difference. When you ask the instance value, it has nothing, right? By default, it will show. Of course, this is a very basic way that you are seeing. Slowly, we will change a lot. Now, if I want to check whether it is a... So, this is one of the questions that you will get asked. If you ever seen any, some code, someone write a class like writing like this object. So, this is needed in Python 2 to create a new style class. In Python 3, everything is a new style. So, you need not worry. But in Python 2, if you don't write that object, it will not be part of the new style. So now I am checking like a is subclass. This is another built-in function. I think finally we left with some four or five only. We have almost covered everything. If you want to check anything is part of something else. So you are checking whether this empty class is part of this object. Obviously, it is correct. If it is wrong, assert, then it will throw an error, right? Assertion error. Similarly, as I told you, in Python 3, we don't need, but in Python 2, this is needed. So if you do that also, it will make no difference. Both are exactly same. Right? If I redefine also. So that's what I want to bring to your notice. Now you understood about the basic class. What is the instantiation? Fine. Now let's look through the constructor. What is a constructor? Remember these terminologies, you will remember a lot. The process of creating a instance is called as instantiation. Then what is a constructor? Whichever constructs is called constructor. No. So this constructor, there is a very interesting point. If you go, some other languages like Java and others has multiple constructors for every class. So Python is very interesting. We have only one constructor. There will not be like a default constructor or a custom constructor like that. Only one constructor. Whether use or not, it's up to you. So first of all, what is a constructor? Why we need it? When you are working with class, you need to understand about the class thing. So if I define anything, so we have functions. Functions are outside. So coming to functions with versus methods. So I would say methods are so kind of functions defined in classes. So whatever you define within a thing is called as this one. And within that methods, there are multiple types of methods. 
so methods need to be called explicitly whereas constructor constructor is only method which will be called implicitly on create on instantiation or like on creating instance or instantiation means constructor is also one kind of method which need to be called let's say i have given a word called as person so i am not writing anything fine and if i need to do the instantiation and i'm asking so i'm asking like this if i say clear python 04 so and so did you see that it is saying of type constructor fine now for this i i will add some kind of instance method so till now you didn't see anything right if i add like this then what will happen you will get as it is do you, is this instance method called explicitly we didn't call so it also will not be executed but if you call it then you can see the value so how do you call an instance method the instance method can be called in two ways so you write the person name means which is the class in that class we have this instance and within that we need to write self this is another big story what is this self sir why we need you know every language has something like a placeholder so uh, today i am creating an instance called as p1 so immediately i will create another instance called as p2 i will create next a p3 or p13 or p something else why only p i can say q also i can do something else but every instance we cannot pass to this class right class is like a template so the self acts as a placeholder for it i say that self acts as a placeholder for the instance being passed because every time we cannot pass the instance which is being created dynamically so for to refer to that instance we use self so that's the reason when you are making a call we should say person class name dot method name of that self self means what the actual instance we are passing did you see we are doing what this is one way of doing but this is an indirect way of doing for you to understand because you came from functions but how it actually happens when you create the thing it will have these attributes if you create an integer object it will have int objects right attributes right similarly if you create this method it will have its attributes if you want to check these attributes we can use the dir of this p1 so first i will check that and i will solve it if i execute it did you observe same like an ordinary built in object so here also we have attributes so apart from the basic underscore underscore attributes if you ignore did you see it has instance method so that's the reason it can be called directly like this so if I execute now did you see it is called so this method can be called two ways but this is like a indirect way but no one will use it <laughs> but if i use the second one also it will indirectly go with the first one only but this is what you need to understand to understand better i can written an assert statement and you can see the difference so both are fine now you understood that it also has one more attribute called as underscore underscore init if you see underscore underscore init whether you define it or not every class instance will have this attribute so luckily we didn't define it so what we say if you call it sir what will happen if i call it will it throw in error no so this method if you don't define also it will not throw any error if you define that that's a different story so how do you define it define underscore underscore init and you give so 
next we will learn about something called as type annotations there it will be helpful it is indirectly saying that from this function you don't return anything none so this is very interesting that you need to understand so so every fun every method can return anything but like constructor constructor method can't can return only none you know that any method or a function if you don't return by default it is none but you are not supposed to return anything else so you should leave it like that so if i do within that let's say i want to do something uh, i would say like you know say new instance method is born after the default features uh, adding default features means the moment an instance is born it will have a name right a person is born he or she will have a name age like that don't ask salary so fine here see did you see that the new instance is born after creating the things and interestingly did you see that here also it is there new instance is born after adding the things interestingly you called here but who called earlier no one called the moment the instance is being created did you observe that it is called so that's why they say that you know so we should never call a constructor explicitly because it gonna do so and also if you want to see the list of attributes of all the things that it has so as i told you we have dir i can use the same dir here to list out all the attributes you see all the list of attributes that it has fine and here there is one interesting point for the first time you are learning another built in function so for that we have something called as vars there is something called as vars vars is a built in function for any attribute if you have the underscore underscore dict observe carefully not every object will have underscore underscore dict so only to the objects which has underscore underscore dict either we can use directly or using vars built in function so what it does technically with respect to the python so it will help us to get the instance attributes for this what are you defined are class attributes right so class variables you didn't define any attributes so now if i define something it will do it so observe if you are defining any variable say if i say um local variable Say like say local variable. If I define, so will I get anything here? Down? No, you will not get anything. But if I define the same thing, okay, self dot variable, or like I do the same thing like a variable, yeah, self dot variable is equal to instance variable. This is called as instance variable. If I define instance variable. Did you see what happened? Whatever is the key, you got that key as a key. So sorry, variable as the key and the value so and so. Or say if I say self dot uh, name is equal to person name, you know, so person one. Or like self dot age is equal to age is equal to say thirty I have given. Now we see what will happen if I execute. I am getting three variables: variable, name, and age. and the corresponding values but the local defined variables without self we cannot access outside this is what you need to understand okay so the this is fine now now you need to understand more about these things about this vars the vars is very interesting that so you vars if you apply on a class instance not a class if class instance it will give the list of attributes of the variables that it has whereas if you want to know there is one more thing called as from pprint import pp if you see here there is another thing called as vars of these things vars is a built in function which can be applied across any things if i apply just vars of the person which is a class observe carefully what will happen for a class if i ask vars it is giving a hell lot of things 
So now, if I do this VARs, uh, particularly on anything else, so if I define like, you know, VARs of list, list, you know, list attributes, it's not just attributes, it will give the entire objects, right? So for every, cla every class instance or the class we can apply, like DAR, DAR is for the list of attributes, whereas the, so VAR is the list of all instances from that particular object. Okay, so similarly, you can see diction and other things, how it is working. Lastly, with respect to this uh, constructors, you understood about the constructors, right? So with the, there is a slight difference within the constructor. Okay, sir, constructor is there, but by default, if you want to pass some arguments to the constructor, how in that case it is created. So if I take some example, like a, this another example, say I want to take like this. It is a class definition. I define animal. I have a constructor and I have a name. But instead of earlier where everything is static, I'm not passing any input. But in this case, I am passing an input called as a name and I'm using it. And in the class instance method, I'm using self.name and I'm saying box. It's a simple example. If I do the constructor initialization and if I call this one, you see here, if I make a call to this animal, it should execute, right? So that is what is expected. 0, 5, if I execute, it will throw an error. What is the error precisely it is saying? Hey, animal dot underscore underscore init requires one positional argument, but you couldn't give it. What is the positional argument? Name. So till now earlier, we didn't have an input, so we are not passing. But now, if you are doing it, so it will work. If I say animal of duck, it will work. Whether you are assigning to something or not, it doesn't matter. If I say animal of duck, again, it will be done. So two times it is being called. Say like to understand that, I can say like, so maybe after this, so I will write like, you know, so new animal, I can say like self dot animal is born. So as we created the class instance two times, so class was created two times, means class instance, whether you use that instance or not, it's up to you. But as you have done that, it will create like this. Now, sir, can I explicitly call this one? This one, what we did? Animal dot underscore underscore init of duck comma duck. Observe carefully, what is this duck? So this one, if you have any confusion, I can write like this, duck one. So it means like this is the instance you are passing. So like this also we can call right explicitly, but it is not a recommended. So not recommended. Not recommended. But if you are using, we can use it. Now, if I want to get the VARs, so I told you print of DAR of this uh, duck one. Duck one. If I ask DAR, DAR will give the list of attributes. But if I ask like, you know, VARs of duck one, you can understand the difference. DAR will give the attributes, whereas VARs will give the list of uh, instances, right? So, so instances means you got, but this walk is a method. It will not come in the VARs. It will come in the DAR. So with respect to this dex one dot, if I ask walk, as it has a print statement, I need not do. I'm just calling it. So, so now you understood about the constructor. So we can go one step ahead with the so self. As I told about the self already, just to refresh what is self means, it's like a placeholder for the instance being passed. So we have seen about the self, which is the instance being passed. As every time we cannot pass the instance, we will use it. So if you take this example, this is another example. The more the examples you see, the more you can understand. If you see in this example, I created a car, class called as car. And I have some variables here also. And I have some variables here also. So one more thing I want to add here is that every class will have two types of things. Class will have methods 
and variables. Every class will have two things, methods and variables. So methods means functions within the class are defined as methods I told. Within the methods, we have three kinds of methods. One is like instance methods. Within those instance methods, one specific category is like a constructor. That's what we have seen, right? Constructor methods. So similarly, there is another thing called as destructor. Destructor methods. So then like after instance methods, we have something called as class methods. And we have something called as static methods. Within variables, we have two types of variables. So, so instance variables, we already saw it. Whatever is associated with self is called as instance variable. And also we have seen local variables. They don't have any instance or anything. They make no sense. They have their validity only till that method. And the other one is called as class method uh, variables. So this is a very good thing you need to remember. In terms of the variables, did you see that I created a variable called as class variable? If I define the same method inside without anything, it's called as a ordinary variable. If I define the same thing outside, even without self also, that is called as a class level variable. Let's say a simple thing. When we need to use class variables means if you want to track everything. If you remember these days, we are getting digital stamps. The same stamp, but every stamp will have a serial number. So how they are getting? So each time they print, they will increment the number, right? Or like, let's say simple thing. You create a car. Every car has a chassis or like every car has a company name. All cars will go with the same company, but every car will have its car name within Tata. So there can be Tata Nano, Tata Sumo or like Tata something else. So we can use that to display it. Say now, if I create a class instance from it, how I do? I can hear. So I am passing Tata Nano, I am passing Tata Sumo. But every time I cannot pass the Tata Nano or Tata Sumo inside. So as the instance will be created dynamically, so self acts as a placeholder. So whatever is defined, modified, everything will be with respect to that. So next, same like this, after this, we have, we have seen the previous problem. So how we have seen the problem, how we want to solve. You remember, so the previous account balance problem is there. Now I think like we have maturity in addressing this problem. Without classes, we solved this one by creating the deposit and withdrawal. Without classes with dictionaries also, we solved it. So, but like with these things, how are we going to solve? Let's see. So with classes, if I see, so what is the point in that previous uh, problem, if I can pull on, we have two accounts for that we need to create. So I think like now you yourself got some kind of maturity in designing the solution. So you need to design something like an account. You can define class account. So you need not write the object, just class. In this class, there should be two things. Two functionalities is like deposit is one thing. You don't know what to write, just write a self. So, and like we have withdrawal, right? Withdrawal. Or like withdraw of self. You don't know what NAG to be done, you create it. So, and every account, when you are creating, it should have a balance. The moment an account is created, it should have a balance. So, how we can do? Define you need of self. As I told you, you will get it. If you don't want, you can ignore it. You can say self dot balance is equal to zero. This is what, right? You know, now deposit means what? With respect to this one, self dot balance. So plus equal to the amount. Means a deposit should have an amount that I add. So similarly for withdraw, I can say amount. We can pass like, sorry, self dot balance minus equal to amount. Now, did you see I created an account? I have a balance. I have a deposit and withdrawal. Don't you see this is much more clear instead of solving in a very big way here. We did a lot of customizations, right? So if it is one, fine. If there are multiple variables also, 
it is no problem now and on top any time if you want to display the account balances that is a very very crazy thing earlier but now it's very easy we can just add like one more method that's it so say like you know display display balance or display balance we can do so the point is if you want static content you can create a variable if you want some functionality you can use a method but the point is a class will have an combination of both variables and actions or variables and functionality what are you call so this is a concept of class based or object oriented in every language the same story works let's say in the this time you, i want to create a person called as uh, so um customer one so you remember these things we did right customer one customer two and all these things let me pull the same content there and try to implement in a better way you see here we we used to have like account creation and all how do you create an account here just create an account that's it so customer one will be created now will you call like this no you call with what so attributes it is not a dictionary to ask like that but you call like an attributes so this is what you need to understand right and um, so instead of using all of that you can also make it much better because you have already defined this methods so let me comment the other part you can see quickly so how it's working clear and python 07 so, so initial balance is zero or explicitly you can write functionality itself to do it much better way instead of you doing customer dot balance you can add this display function you see there are two ways to do the same thing so either like this balance is a variable whereas this is a method right observe so it is saying that you know has no attribute customer holder okay account holder i wrote okay account holder i i need to define okay we need to define some name right i forgot to give if you if they you are creating an account for a name only you need to create so i give an amount name i say like account holder so self dot account holder is equal to the given name observe you are passing an input so you need to use it now this time observe carefully if i execute it will throw an error hey you are supposed to give the thing right say if i say customer 1 now it would be interesting to see that so customer 1 initial balance zero customer two so so and so like this you have so uh, maybe like if you pass a different name say like instead of customer one if i say sudha so if i say customer one is sudha so you got it and in the same fashion if i want to create the same thing for a similar other customer i need not even worry about this kind of things now so i need not explicitly say customer one or customer two like that i can just pass on these values instead of doing all of that i can say that initial balance it itself will tell you you know initial balance means customer ba account balance for sudha is so and so i am not hard coding anything right so customer one or anything i am not hard coding it's fine now if you want to do the deposit action with respect to the customer one uh, instance i can do customer one dot deposit of again i need not pass explicitly i can do now so after depositing of something then again you can do the same thing so you need not worry about displaying all the things you can just say after displaying and in the same fashion if i do withdraw so the same logic i need to do so customer one customer one dot withdraw of i need not pass these things if i execute again i get it if i execute it it's working perfect so customer and the balance everything you got clearly okay, let's say this time for the second account i want to create but see how how matured i am now i can use the same concept i need not worry about customer one or customer two i can just pass on the things if i say i want to do for like mohana so why customer to every time 
I'll write like Mohana. So I can work with respect to that. So I can say like initial balance. So Mohana dot balance. Say like Mohana dot withdrawal. So here also in the same fashion. So I'm making the things much more easy. Now I have like one variable. So which way I'm tracking. Only the balance we are tracking, right? So name is something which is static, which is not changing. Balance is something which is changing. That's why you understood. So like that, we have created an account. Now, so you create like, you know, assignment. Create a, create a, so, so personal loan, uh, And savings, savings account, single account should have like loan and a savings amount also. So there are multiple things which are changing. So then with this, it is much more easy compared to what you do in an ordinary way. As I repeat again, so it is not the all power without this also, we can solve many things, but how much time you're taking, how much logic you're building, that's what matters. Now going further, hope you remember, I told about the class variables. So within the class, if you are defining something, it's called as a class variable. And if you're defined outside, it is different. Let's say to understand the importance of class variables. So variables defined at the class level are called as class variables. Okay. They are used to track all the classes. Let's say employee is a class which I'm creating. Every employee will have something. You know, one more interesting thing, whenever you're defining a class, so we can write like, you know, so some uh, doc strings. Base class for employees. Something I wrote. Why I use triple double quotes? Because that's what you need to use. It will have in terms of the documentation. Now, within this, if I add some things, so whatever I add at the class level are called as class variables. So employee ID, employee so-and-so are the, so what else would be there? Maybe like I will say company. So company is like, you know, uh, my company. My company. So it doesn't mean that integers or string should be there. Anything we can have. So company is there and every other details are there. Now let's say for if you want to, you just define like this. Can I call this employee class? Yes, without any problem you can call. It will have these attributes. In fact, you called it. It is working. But if you want to assign to something, instantiation. So that's what we need to be aware. During instantiation, Say, if I assign to say like E1 is equal to something. If I say, hey, what is E1? It makes no difference. If I say like, you know, vars of E1 and vars of instance. So you see, vars of E1 and I have like vars of employee. Observe the difference. Vars of E1 means the instance. So vars of E1 means the instance. And whereas this is the so, so employee class before even instantiation for the class itself, you are asking if you observe carefully, you will understand. And where are these company and other details coming? coming? I say company. Did you observe? So all these things are coming for the class means this, when you do a vars. So for an instance, you get instance attributes, right? Whereas for if you do vars for a class, you get class variables. That's a difference. But if you do DAR, that is a different story. DAR will give the list of attributes, right? What all things you can do. So what all things you can do. If I say print of DA, DAR of even. You can observe the difference, how it's working. Sure. Did you observe? And also there was some metadata for everything. Even doc strings are coming. Did you observe? 
what are your here written here it will come now i will make this function a bit better by adding a constructor so define underscore init so like this and this is a constructor maybe like i am saying new employee join and uh, the moment i am calling it it will be executed see every time the new employee is joined fine i think this is like metadata so i just want to comment these things so you have seen how it is working now if i want to focus on these core things so let me comment them okay so i just created an instance that's it nothing else now if you observe carefully employee created is coming so to avoid these things i am writing separately this is a constructor if you want you can write the doc strings here also so 3 followed by 3 so here we can say like this is a constructor in fact a constructor we can write in a different ways so the most common way is like people write like this this is called as rst format like markdown there is something called as rst when you are creating doc strings documentation this rst format also can be used it's not mandatory so where you specify each of the parameter and mention what you need let's say when i am creating a constructor i want to pass the name also and the salary also of the person so i pass it so if you are passing these values next time when you are making a call it will throw an error hey we are supposed to give the values you cannot use directly like this now to make it much mature so i will do again now again the same instantiation but with a clean code even is equal to employee so what it is expecting here the name and salary so if i say like you know uh, rohan so with a salary of say some number i got to give some number i give now if i give two values it will working so in python it doesn't matter whether a variable is used or not if you go for like go language it will throw an error if you define a variable and not use but python is bit better you should be happy for that so okay what you use it's up to you now within the class either you can write like name is equal to name or like self dot salary is equal to salary is equal to salary so if you define like this then in the constructor you will see the things right in the vars if i ask for the vars of this instance you will see those values if i say even of it you can notice that what are is created so fine in the same fashion there is one more thing called as underscore underscore del underscore underscore del underscore underscore of self in fact this is also will not return anything it makes because they will not be called directly but it will be indirectly called so um what is say um employee employees Uh, uh leaving so uh, basically you didn't write a logic for like leaving but did you see what happened employee is leaving is coming what is the concept constructor will be called the moment instance is created instance is created some memory allocated and fine but at the end of your program say like if i say so last statement in the script if i say if you observe carefully first last statement of the script will be executed and then this dying is happening means if you don't delete also it will be deleted because at the end of your code where everything is done memory will be deallocated right so this is how it happens but if you do also you can explicitly also you can do how we can do explicitly if you want to do means we can use del of even if i say this del of even let's say explicitly before it observe carefully now what will happen employee is leaving first it will come so this is called as instantiation this is called as like a de deletion of instance deletion of instance so when the deletion of instance can happen so specifically explicitly if you can write or implicitly at the end of the script it will be happening now you understood about constructor and a destructor and the second point the names here and the names here 
may or may not match and it is not even mandatory to match it is up to you let's say instead of name if i say employee name it makes no difference but in the constructor sorry in the vars you can see those attributes changed now the point is i created two constructor variables you know the moment a user adds i want to increment the count so for that what i do employee name dot employee count i want to increment plus equal to 1 employee count in the same fashion so when the employee was uh, you know leaving so i want to decrement right so you know see here when i am incrementing when i am decrementing and with respect to incrementing how i am incrementing did you see that i am using the class name dot this class variable so doing the things so observe carefully every time it going to work so and i am not interested in the vars of everything so maybe like if you want to know what is this uh, variable so print of this e1 has can i ask the employee count i can ask the employee count observe carefully this is a class variable but the class variable can be called with respect to the instance and also with respect to the class so when you are making a call so when terms of usage did you observe carefully what i am doing here i am calling like this and like that also did you see employee count is equal to 1 or employee dot employee count is equal to 1 means a class variables though you define like this so if you just say like employee plus equal to it will be a local variable if you do like a self dot employee plus equal to it is an instance variable as i did a class dot so and so it is a class variable sir can i give like some other variable saying it is defined no if you want to use this first it should be defined what is saying employee has do no attribute so whatever the variable you defined here that only we can access with respect to the class so if i execute now it worked perfectly now you understood the concept of constructor destructor and the class variable how do you manage the class variables like increments or decrements but in terms of usage you can use both in sync and so within this also we can also ask so uh, we can say uh, which employee is leaving maybe like some current employee is leaving okay so i can say like self dot employee count so is employee is leaving if i say like this observe carefully what's happening so one employee is leaving or employee with um, something like a count means itself is the same right so employee so current count of employees say i can say current count of employees or something means i am able to access this uh, variables within also or explicitly if i want to create one separate thing called as total employees i want to create so basically till now we have class variables or class methods i can write like a class so sorry um, like this if you see observe carefully total employees count i wrote like a self this is called as a instance method so in this instance method you are asking total count you are incrementing the count of the employees and you are doing it so or like here also you are incrementing here also you are incrementing maybe like i do um, why do you want to increment explicitly but if you implement also it, it will work perfectly so if i ask it here it gonna work so but if you want you need to say the it explicitly hope you already know that whenever if you want to ask something we should do so e1 dot employee count if i ask it will do it of course this is a very bad logic so i didn't i should not do like this so but if you want you can change it that's what i mean to say total employee counts it will tell so total number of employees is 1 so similarly if i create like one more instance so for this i can create multiple instances right say like i want to create say uh, employee 2 is equal to say employee of say mohan if i say now if i say explicitly so instead of as it is like a class method can i ask directly like this employee2 dot 
total number of count. So I am making a call like this. If I execute, did you see what is happening? Hey, you are passing the mohana, but you are not passing the salary. If I pass the salary, then it will work. So total number of employees and others. It is saying that, hey, you are doing something, but this function is not returning anything. So when it is not returning, if you make a print, it will waste. So if I say total employee counts here also, it is not a print is not needed. Here also, print is not needed. If I execute now, did you see? So total employees count is so and so. So whatever the logic I wrote, I can access this. So here I showed you what is the issues of class variables. So next, as in the class variables, um, uh, after this, we have something called as encapsulation. So what is this concept of encapsulation? Why we need it? Encapsulation means like, this is very, very interesting and important in Python. If you go for languages like C++ or Java, so there also you might have heard something called as public, private variables like that, right? So there is like, you know, protected, private and public. So if I have like a variable, just a variable, till now what you are having, that is like a public variable. Till now, what are the variables you saw? Those are called as public variables. And if you start the same variable with a single underscore, it's protected variable. And if you start the same variable with two underscores, it's a private variable. And if you start something with a two way underscores and ending with two underscores, it has some meaning. One of the things you saw constructor and destructor. So similarly, so why we need it? First of all, why this need is need. So in Python, in Python, so this is very, very important. We can access even private variables, private variables and methods. And what is the point of defining, sir? So use it to avoid accidental overwrite, overwriting, accidental overwriting. What is accidental overwriting, sir? If I define two names, let's say number one is equal to 100. Then if I say number one, again, number one is equal to 200. What's the value of number one? 200, because that is the latest one. So, so when you're defining variables also, so in the variables, you don't define like two. You will not, you are not a foolish person, right? To define the same variable twice in the same thing. But next you will learn something called as, uh, so inheritance, that's where it will be very much useful. So to understand this concept, let me clearly give you all the things. I told that there are two types of variables. One is class variable and instance variables and local variables. If I ignore the local variables, you know the public class variable, private class variable starting with a single underscore, private class variable, which is starting with two underscores. Similarly, you have a class, so variables, which is instance variable, sorry instance variables you have. So similarly, you have methods also. A class contains two things. One is variables and methods. Within the methods also, you have instance variables. So other two kinds of methods I will tell afterwards. If it is like starting with single underscore, protected instance variable, starting with two underscores, it is like a private instance variable. So like this, you understood. And similarly, so if you are making a call to this class, so how it works, let me show you. So before creating any instance, if I ask vars, so if I use like pprint, from pprint, import, say pprint, observe. So by default, you know that there were these methods which are defined, three methods, and as the construct is also a method, you understood it. So within constructor also has, and I'm asking directly for it only, Python, say 0, 09 so and so did you observe that you are getting like mac pim proxy and like class underscore so and so observe carefully so you know these are like you know metadata which you didn't define but they will come directly but if i ignore them did you observe that there is underscore underscore a so like a protected class variable what are you have written and also public class variable what are you have defined but sir, where is this private class variable, sir, means there is no something which is starting with two underscores. It will change like this. 
So, so outside the class, when you are defining, if you want to access, it will become like this. You know, this is what more important. So to avoid accidental overriding, they do it. So once you understood the uh, inheritance, means a class can be inherited in another class, you will see. Generally, public and protected can be accessed directly. Then what is the difference between them, sir? I will tell shortly afterwards. But if you are trying to access the private variable directly, then it will throw in error. If I say like, you know, underscore, underscore, so and so if I ask, it will throw in error. It says that there is no attribute itself defined. So if you want to access, you need to access like this. Any class, sorry, uh, private variable, if you want to access, we should prepend it with the class name as a protected variable. So this is how we need to do. Similarly, if you are doing an instance, if you're creating an instance from it, from this class. So if I create an instance, as I showed you here in the instance, there are three things. In the same logic, when you're accessing them, you need to do B, so B, and for the private variable, so how you are doing? You are prepending with the class name as a protected variable, right? So this is what you need to understand. And similarly, you have three instances here. So three instance methods, public, private, and so and so. So these three instance methods also, when you're calling, the same logic works. Public, it's same. So protected, it's same. For private, did you see that you are prepending the class name? Next, I will create like one more method. Say like, you know, another method. Say, in this method, I want to access the public, private, and uh, protected variables. So instead of working with the class variables, because it's a instance, I am trying to do with the instance. And observe carefully, I am explicitly doing only with private things. So private variable, it's a private class level variable, private instance level variables, and private class level variable, right? So private instance variable, private instance method, private class variable. All three privates, without prepending with the class name, I am directly accessing. Sir, is it possible? Yes. That's what you need to understand. In Python, so class variables or class methods or, sorry, uh, private variables, private methods or anything, so cannot be accessed outside the class definition directly. Outside the class definition, if you want to access, we need to prepend with the class name as a protected variable. But within the class name, within the class definition, same class, then we can directly access. If I do now, did you see now? When I'm asking dot new method, means I'm calling this one, this new, did you see that I'm able to access these all individually without any problem? So this is what I want to bring to your notice. This is all about encapsulation. So hope you understood about these things. So once again, uh, like a revision to explain you. So to give you the gist of what we have discussed. Dot txt. If I see here, so functions which are written within the class are called as methods. And there are three types of methods called as instance methods, class methods, and so static methods and class methods. You didn't deal about these two till now. I will tell you afterwards. But you deal about instance method. Every instance method will have self as an argument. For instance method, what is the self? Self is a placeholder for the instance being passed. So now we understood about the object-oriented programming. So for every object-oriented programming, there will be four features. Data binding. Data binding means first what? You need to bind both variables and methods, right? Variables and actions. Every class will have either of these two or two. Bandit, it's not mandatory, but it will be there. That is called as a data binding. First, combining all together. Then encapsulation means data hiding or protecting in a better way. So it is not pure hiding in Python sense. It is like to avoid accidental overriding. So, and then there is something called as inheritance. Means instead of you defining entire logic in a single class, you can define in different classes and you can use combine. Like you have some logic, if it is common, you write like separate functions, right, earlier. So like that. In that, there is something called a inherent, single inheritance, multiple inheritance, and multi-level inheritance. Python supports all of that. In fact, that's what is very 
confusing for others who come from different languages. Python supports single, multiple, multi-level inheritance, whereas that's not the same case with C++ and Java. And the next important thing is polymorphism, means overriding. The same thing should work in differently in different scenarios. So these are all the basic functionalities for every class. So if you see about the class methods, so for this one, so two things I want to just to mention about the class variables and this one in one shot. If you see here, um, if I want to create one more class, so I created a robot class. I have created one representation also. And you told, you understood that if you define anything variable at the class level, it is called as a class variable. And similarly, within the constructor, I can just use that or it's up to us whether I want to use or not. If I define a constructor, within that I am not using anything. So I am defining a name and I am assigning to the name and I am saying initializing. That's it. And similarly like this, you have a destructor also. Where in the destructor also I can say, hey, so it is getting added and deleted. So now what will happen if I create like a 10 classes or anything, it will delete it. Say if I write like a quick call uh, to make the things, you will understand. So I created a class. So I am calling this call. So class. And I am calling like explicit function called as I say. Say hi. So I defined a function. So sorry, method which is doing these things. But this time see here. And the order doesn't matter. You can define any method in any order. It's up to you. But every time constructor should be the first. And if you write a destructor also in the same place, it's good. Or some people try to write destructor in the last. But it's up to you. So order doesn't matter. And if I say like explicit function. Now if I say like, you know, clear and Python, say 10 so and so. So um, I have defined like, you know, so robot chitty and saying like how many. Did you see that I am calling like robot dot how many? Means it's like a class method, right? Yeah. So now the point is I am defining a class method. Class method means it's very interesting. There is another built-in function called as class method. Till now every built class function you are passing. But for the first time you are using like a decorator. When you call as a decorator, did you observe here instead of self, we are using CLS. Means for these things, the instance is going inside it. Self is a placeholder for the instance. Whereas CLS is a placeholder for the class. And observe one thing. it is There is nowhere recommended that, you know, class or self are like keywords. You Instead of CLS, I can write Uday also. But I should use the same thing everywhere. But as everyone is using the same thing, they recommend to use the same. But if you define something like this, we can use it in the same way. Now, if I together see at one shot, the all together it will happen. In this function, I am defined first the population. In the constructor, I am incrementing the population, means class variable. And the destructor, I am decrementing the population count. And when say hello, I am telling what is the name. But in class method, I am just giving self dot cls dot so and so. Means any class level variable, if you want to do management, so that is how you get it. So this is all about the class methods. Class variable means defining outside. But if you want to manage, modify them, you can do like this. But if you want some function which deals only with the class variables, so then we can have an explicit function, sorry, method. That is called as a class method. For that, we need to use the class method as a decorator, which is in fact another built-in function. So, but here the nomenclature is CLS. As I told you, CLS and self are not keywords. They are not mandatory to be used. But as everyone is using, it's a best practice by Pipate to follow that. So the last point, like this class methods, there is one more thing called as the instance method. Sorry, instance method you'd see, class methods you have seen. The other one is called a static method. So what is the static method? In which case we need to use it? As I told earlier, as I told you earlier, so methods are of three types. Instance methods, 
class methods and static methods. Instance methods will have will have self. So whereas class methods will have will have CLS. So means for passing the things. Then what will static method will have? Nothing. So what is this nothing, sir? I will tell you. And observe they what are the default decorators in Python means there are three default decorators. Means these are like built-in functions which should not be called directly like a function, but we should call like this. So this is called a static method, class method, and property decorators. Property we will see afterwards, but generally any method if I define, so we need to do like this. Say if I define some variable, class variable. If I define a method, this is called an instance way method, right? So you are taking the instance and you are doing. With respect to the instance, you are doing something, right? So if you are using the instance, it is called an instance method. If I define like a class method or a static method, these are the ways. So if I make a call to this one, observe carefully, an instance method and class method can be called differently. You see here, you created a class instance. With respect to that, you are calling the instance method. So instance method can be directly called like this or like this with respect to this one. But no one will use the second logic. They will call every time with respect to instance. This is a direct way. But when you are calling like this instance dot display, it will check with which class it was created. In that class, it will check for this method. And for that, it will pass the instance and this one. Similarly, if I go for the class method, class method also can be called with respect to instance if it is pure reading. If you update, it makes no difference. But if you do it, fine. And similarly, if you are cause calling directly like this, or similarly, if you go for the static method, that also you are doing. If I say CLS, it says here and Python 11. Did you see? So all were being called and you are seeing the outputs. Correspondingly. So every two were same, right? Every two were same. Every two were same. So both are same. And observe, it doesn't mean that we should do like this only. In fact, this is the correct way. So there is another alternative way. Means you need not do like this, but after defining, you can say CM display is equal to class method of CM display. You can display like this. Or you can say this one also like this explicitly. So SM display is equal to static method of SM display. Mostly the ICAM test will give you this kind of logic. But uh, no one will use like this. But just to let you know. So you define a method and you pass like this to the classes and you do. In this way also it works like that only. So in this way also like that only. Let me comment this one for a moment to show you that we can do like that also. You see? But this is the other so way that we need to do. So no one will write like this explicitly. So everyone will use that decorator connotation. So either you do like this or like this, both will work in the same way. Okay, sir. Now coming to the case of why we need class variables. With respect to class, if you want to do anything, class variables, you need a class method. Then if you don't want class or uh, this one, let's say you have a static code. If you are given two numbers, you need to add and give the third number. For that, why we need the instance? Why we need the class? Nothing, right? So if you have some kind of utility function, you can do. So if you create like this kind of way, in future, if you have something, you can use it and change it. So let's take this example. One more example for you to understand about how it's working. Say here, I have another class. In this class, I have a class variable. And here I have an instance variable. So I want to increment it. When I'm incrementing, did you observe that? So if I do like a, a static method, what will happen? I have created like a, this is one of the entry question actually. Generally, static method means what? General increment. So static method means it should not take anything. So for whatever the given value, if I pass a value, it should increment it. So means what? So um, return 
value plus one. So that's what it should do. Static method means it will not take input nothing. So if you execute a call, it should work. If I say clear and clear and Python eleven. So what is saying? You have given a value and it is not able to do it. You need to pass the value. Oh, sorry. I am removing everything. Leave it. I'm making it very simple. So it is saying like increment. If you pass a value, it will do it. So if I pass like 10, increment will become like 11. So here also, if you pass like a 10, so it will increment like 11. If I pass it now. So increment will do the change, but it will not do anything. If you print it, it will do. So this is the actual functionality of any static method. So where you do, you pass explicitly value for that value only it is incrementing. And after that, if you ask, hey, what is the value of val? It will be zero only. Because what are the changes are there? It's not updating this one, right? Say like you define something like val is equal to say two. Okay. So will it make any difference? No. When you are not passing anything, what are the changes will be local to that function only? When you are using, you can use like that. And not only this, this function can be used directly also. Say like increment. Increment is another function you have. So which is taking like a self and it will take like, you know, um, uh, say like self dot value is equal to self dot increment of self dot value. If I say, did you see I'm making the call to the static method directly. So means within the class we can call, outside also we can call, but that method will not take any class or the instance. It is not taking CLS or self right. That is the point of class methods. Next, going for the next thing about is the MRO called as method resolution order, where we need to understand about the inheritances and other concepts. Say if I can divide this entire concept into a small part, like the basic loop. So if I can pass all this content to that, this basic loop, you understood. Next going ahead with this is about the MRO inheritance. What is MRO and what is inheritance? MRO means like method resolution order and inheritance means how the inheritance is working. See, basically inheritance, the simple example everyone can understand is we inherit whatever our parents have, right? That is inheritance, be it the genes or like, you know, so uh, property or anything you inherit from your parents, right? The features and everything. So when you're dealing with this inheritance, so the common logic of speaking is parent-child relation or like super class, sub child class relation. Super means the parent or like sub means like below. So either this relation or this relation you can use to name. Parent child is like easy for anyone to understand. MRO means like method resolution order. So when you have like multiple classes, how things are going. So that to say. First of all, what is the need to have a inheritance? Means for better usage of classes. You remember earlier we discussed about the account. So in account, we define like this only, right? Self dot balance. And we refined self dot balance plus equal to one amount. Withdrawal equal to amount. If I create an instance and if I do with it, I get to there. Oops, sorry. So and so, okay. CLS and Python 0, 1, so and so. Did you see that the balance came and where you got and DAR you understood? So this is all fine, right? So, but did you see that in this account, there is one problem. So if you want to maintain the minimum balance, then this account is not suitable. Sir, then in the withdraw, so I need to write some logic, right? If I write that logic now here itself, then what will happen? The people who are opening till now, like ordinary accounts with zero balance, they cannot do it. So if you want to facilitate the existing code, 
and if you want to extend the existing code, extend is a word I am saying, then we can define another class and do it. Say class minimum balance balance, say account I want to create. You remember, so earlier for the new style classes, I told we used to write object. It is not mandatory in fact, but if you don't write also, object will go by default. So, but if you here, we need to write the parent class. Which are the class you want to inherit? If I do like a minimum balance now, so within that, if I have a constructor, say I don't write anything. Okay. So now if I create like a minimum balance account, if I ask, so what are the attributes and DAR? You know, without defining anything, by default, the minimum balance also will get all the things. Let's say I don't want to this. Okay, leave it. I want to focus more only on it. Did you see this also got the same balance? No matter whether you give or not, it also is having them. And if I ask DAR, did you see it got like the balance with the raw? But in this class, you didn't define them, but you got it. So this is the point of inheritance. In the child, you need not define again. We can just use it. But sir, one thing you need to remember, this is most important. It will, uh, win whenever your parent has having some class. So we need to, you know, so respect the constructor. So in the parent, what are the constructor is there? We need to call it. In fact, when there is no input, there is no difference actually. So did you see that balance is already coming without having this constructor also? Balance is there. But whenever you are passing input arguments, that's where it is very mandatory. In this particular case, it is optional because constructor is not taking any inputs. When you don't call, indirectly it will call the constructor. But it's a best practice to call explicitly. So, uh, and like, sir, if I want to modify the logic or like, you know, if I want to check that MRO, yeah, before even executing, I will tell what is this MRO, how this works. MRO means method resolution order. For every class which is defined, there will be an MRO. If I ask, say like, if I do like a print empty and if I ask, see here, observe. For this class, this is MRO. What is this MRO? If you focus, you'll understand. Means, first you have main. Main means underscore underscore means means for this current suite. You have account class. You asked for the account. Account is directly created. Right? Whether you pass object or not, it is object only. And what is the previous one? Object. Means this account is inheriting object. So that's what. If I remove this also, it will do the same thing. If I remove this also, it will repeat the same thing. Did you see? If I place it again also, it will do the same thing. So now, in the same fashion, for this minimum balance account also, I will ask, hey, what is your MRO? If I ask, it will tell a big thing. What is the MRO for this minimum balance account? If I say, first it is going to the minimum balance account because that is what the class because this minimum balance account is inheriting from account, it is a next it will go to account. Next it will go to object. Sir, what is the point of this MRO? Why we need? What is this order? Means whenever you are calling any attribute with respect to this, it will go in this order. Let's say I am doing some actions. Say I am doing like, you know, so initially some balance. I am doing dot deposit, dot withdraw, dot withdraw and all these things. So point is, initially you have 1300, then you withdraw 900. So again, you are withdrawing 400. Means like you are almost withdrawing everything. So everything was withdrawn. Because you didn't define these methods, everything is defined there. So now we understood that in child class, without you defining, everything will go to the parent. Go from the parent. But what if, you see here, so now the balance after withdrawing and everything also, it is going so and so. Say like, you know, after withdrawing, so 400, if I ask a2 dot balance, did you see it become like zero? But you don't want the zero, right? You want a minimum balance. If you want a minimum balance, then you can modify the logic. So, so only when the case is 
uh, less than your logic you want to write in other case you want to execute the previous logic only because you don't want to reinvent the wheel so observe carefully i wrote the same method called as withdra because i want to modify that only and here i wrote if the balance minus amount is less than 100 so then don't do the transaction else so then you execute this logic so how you are explicitly calling the parent class dot method dot self comma so and so if i do like this now it will say like hey maintain minimum balance we cannot do that after withdrawing so we cannot withdraw of course we cannot withdraw it will not allow so it will executing find it so this is what is about extending the existing classes so inheritance so this is all about the method resolution order and also what is this method resolution order telling again when a method is defined in the child class it will not go to the parents if you observe in this case you have a withdraw here you have withdraw here why this withdraw was executed because th this child instance is created from this class so anything it will check first locally if it is not there within the class then it will go to the parent so the point of this mro means first it will check for any attribute in this class if it is not it will go it to its parent if it's not it will go to its parent if it is not there it will throw an error <laughs> if it is not there also it will throw an error so hope you now you understood about the inheritance how it is working and how the inheritance works so we can see like different examples i will quickly give so you can just walk through that so inheritance means like a single inheritance so within the single inheritance we can tell different way you see in this example what i want to show there is one parent and two childs so two childs have the same parent say i want to create a car class within that i have volvo and audi within the car class i define some constructor some methods also i define some hello also i define so let's see about the logic afterwards but fine i define right see constructor and so on so. similarly i am passing this to this one here also i defined a constructor and i i told you remember whenever this parent class is having some arg arguments then you are supposed to exactly call that class with those attributes observe carefully here your bmw car is having more attributes means like auto gear and other information but for the parent it will not need all so whenever you are creating a class like a child class you ensure to add all the arguments of your parent in the same order better and so then you add your arguments order is not mandatory because you are explicitly passing then you are you need to explicitly pass this one say cars is your class dot init of so and so and extra argument you are defining and you are doing your job similarly for the volvo also you are doing the same thing so and apart from that you are adding one more and observe carefully get chassis and get method are the methods of the parent you are not defining anything whereas here you defined hello i think hello is there in all three right one parent and child and if you see this every this child whether bmw has its auto gear and the volvo has a auto drive something explicitly now the point is how method resolution works is if you create a class from this volvo if you ask any attributes first it will check locally if it has it will give auto driving if you asking it will give so if you say hello if you take the example of hello it's very interesting i created three classes right car 1 car 2 car 3 for everything if i ask hello it will give explicitly whichever the car is called classed so if you see if the same method is present in all the classes whenever you are calling with respect to whom you are calling it will create the same observe here also there is i am a car class i am a bmw class i am a volvo class and if you are creating from a instance of this volvo then this hello will be called means if if that particular child class has anything it will not go to the parent if it don't have it will go to the parent so so i am a volvo class i am a bmw class it is doing explicitly right and observe the mro 
so for a car it is coming from the object but as bmw is coming from cars right cars is its parent and object is its parent similarly volvo has like parent cars has a parent of objects so now i remember so i told about this subclass sub is subclass we can ask is bmw a subclass of car yes it is created from car is volvo created from cars class yes is integers created from class no false right so that's what you need to understand how it actually works yeah. so fine so hope you understood about this inheritance concept next a small change within the inheritance like one more way to say is like so the more examples if i give so better it will work if i say here you see in this example i have a base class base class has this uh, values and i am having a derived class observe carefully in this example i showcased the importance of this encapsulation you have the base class base class has like a public private and protected variables so x y z clearly to understand so in base class if you display i told within the method you can within the same class you can define without calling so anything you can purely call the even private so variables but outside if you want to use we need to write like a protected variable before that right for private variables no if i am using the same in a derived class in derived class means i wrote like child class you can call derived class any different names but i am inheriting that base class right fine and you i need to call the constructor of the parent what is my parent base i can write like the base dot underscore underscore to so and so or there is another way called a super this is another built in function either you can write this explicitly where you write the explicit class name which is inheriting or you write super if you write super super will understand what is the parent of this class and it will inherit that class and call that particular attribute so instead of you doing explicitly we can use super this super works very differently in python 2 that is okay leave it um, it is more matured in python 3 so in, there is no problem instead of you explicitly calling you can do like this it will implicitly call in the backend so if you, the moment you call it and observe you have defined this one so you also have defined x y z did you observe the same variables x y z the same variables x y z are there did you see x y z x y z right here for x y z you do 1 2 3 here x y z you give 4 5 3 4 and what i told you previously about the mro if you are creating an instance from the child class if it is having the attributes it will get from it instead of going somewhere else but did you see the method is defined here where in the parent now we see the magic how it works this is one thing you need to very much remember observe if i uh, you know make a class from it so and if i make a call observe did you see here what will happen now in the parent when you call obviously the same values will come there is nothing to different but when you are calling from the child did you observe that this private variable underscore underscore self you have defined in the child something but if you are calling this method what you got the parent private variable only right means accidental overriding it will not allow so that is the point of underscore underscore x means private variable if you define the same thing in the child the parent's value will come whereas if you go for the y y has like a protected here which is like a single underscore protected here and what is the child value that you are getting so whenever you want the parents value to come you go with a private whenever you want the child van to come if there is the same name then you go for protected but when you got an ordinary variable what are is local it will come as it is hope you understood about this uh, encapsulation also within the inheritance so with this like uh, i want to stop and uh, we can come back so about different kinds of things and it doesn't mean that we need to have 
only inheritance in this way so lastly i want to just stop with one thing to show you like what are the different levels of inheritance within the inheritance levels you need not have like only all in the single level if you observe carefully this is level 1 you have some method i am inheriting this is level 2 so this is level 3 you see this is like a level 4 level 5 level 6 it means one parents parents parent parent like so it's not like a one parent and child parent child and this is parent to the next one this is parent to the next one this is called as multi level inheritance okay multi level inheritance multi level level in inheritance okay yeah. sure this is what it works just go through it is very interesting so these things you will learn a lot if i say clear and python 03c did you see each one is executing you can check the mro for each of the things if i create an object from this level and for this object if i say print of object dot underscore underscore mro if i call it you can see object has no attribute mro so uh, underscore underscore mro so if i see the mro logic so you can see yeah underscore underscore so sorry we need to call for the class right i forgot so you do for the level 1 so if i say level level 11 dot mro if i say now if you see for everything it is going level so class 11 i think one i asked right okay class 11 if i ask you can see now what is the chain of mro it has whenever you ask like this there is no limit on the number of levels that you can go any limit you can go so this is all about it okay